Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash malicious compliance, where people always get exactly what they ask for. And guys, if you've ever had a horrible teacher, today, OP tells a tale about the time a relentless, power-tripping Karen teacher gets put in her place. I hope you enjoy the super satisfying lineup of stories, and do hit that subscribe button for future stories. So I deliver home heating oil in a very rural and mostly flat part of the UK. In my delivery area, there's many large drainage channels or water dikes. The roads are often very narrow, and a single track frequently runs alongside these water dikes, separated by a narrow grass verge. No safety barrier. Anywho, this one day in the depths of winter, it was below freezing. There had been a light spattering of snow, and there was a thin layer of ice on the water. I had just finished doing a customer's delivery, and I was winding in the hose prior to collecting payments and departing. My truck was completely blocking the road, as there was nowhere for me to pull it off the road. We're limited by the length of delivery hose. Blocking the road is pretty common, and it's also legally acceptable, as long as we work quickly and safely. So I was just waiting for the customer to finish writing a check for their oil, when this large Mercedes pulls up behind my truck, and the driver immediately starts leaning on the horn, shouting and swearing and screaming at me to move that effing truck out of the way right now. Now, my usual response when faced with similar behavior is to blank the swearer and pretend they don't exist. Being 6 foot 3 and 285 pounds usually helps keep most people at bay. So with that, I ignored Mr. Shouty Man and finished up with my customer. The customer then said to me, hey, just ignore him, he's well known in the village for being a bit of a dick. I then say goodbye and get into my truck. Now at this point, as I was putting away the paperwork prior to driving off, I happened to glance on the driver's side mirror and see Mr. Shouty Man storming up the side of my truck with a tire iron in his hand. And I'm thinking, oh crap. I immediately hit the central locking button and lock myself in the cab. So the next thing I know, Mr. Shouty Man has climbed up onto the step, he's hanging off the mirror arm with one hand and brandishing the tire iron in the other, while shouting at me, Open this door right now, you four-eyed C-word. Now, I do want to note that I was wearing spectacles for driving. Oh, the wit of the man. At this point, I cue the malicious compliance. The guy told me to open the door, so I did. But I decided to kick it open. I kicked it open so hard, the man lost his grip on the mirror arm, and he was flung backwards into the water that was up to his chest. It was freezing cold, filthy water. At which point, I calmly start my engine and drive off. As I left, I looked in the mirror to see the guy floundering around in chest-deep icy water, dressed in a business suit. I then called the customer who had witnessed everything, and he happily said that he would give a statement to whoever needed one, confirming I acted in self-defense. Then I made a fairly difficult call to my boss, and I told him what happened, and my boss said, I'll await this call with interest. When I got back to the yard that evening, I asked my boss what happened, and apparently no one even called to make a complaint. Guys, I love this malicious compliance so much. Like, sometimes you really have to teach arrogant idiots a lesson, right? Like, if someone's marching up to you with a freaking tire iron, threatening you and potentially wanting to harm you, I'd say a kick into freezing cold water is well-deserved at that point. I also want to say it's safe to assume that his honking days are over, right? And that he learned a hard lesson. But let's be real, the guy's gonna wash up, change out of those filthy clothes, and it's probably business as usual the next day. No pun intended. So this story happened a few years ago, when I was a chef working in what was a fancy golf club for wealthy people. You got the very assorted bunch of people coming into the club, and every so often, an absolute weapon. So on this day, I was working in one of the smaller kitchens on my own, doing bar food and snacks for the members, and it was a particularly busy day, and I was flat out. One of the tables was booked for a group of four looking for a ladies' lunch. The first of the women arrive, and she orders a soup, as the waitress tells me that she's starving. So I put the soup on. I'm finishing off some of the other checks I had, and see that the soup is starting to boil. I then pour it in a bowl and send it out. The waitress brings it back minutes later, saying the customer isn't happy, and that it's cold. Now I'm sitting here thinking, strange, I really thought I had that at a boil. So I heat it again and send it out, and the waitress literally bounces right back to me with the bowl in hand, saying that the woman is complaining again that the soup is cold. Now it's an open kitchen, so I look over to see this woman in her late 60s who's still alone at the table, with a look of disdain on her face. 
like I was the help that had ruined her day by existing. Now if you've worked in the service industry, you'll know that Karens are everywhere. And I've always been of the approach of deflect and give them what they want. So I put the suit back on and get it to a racing boil. I then grab a bowl from the bottom of the hot press and have the waitress standing there waiting so it's served and straight out. The poor waitress comes back minutes later and she says, I'm so sorry, she's saying that the soup is cold. At this point, I glance over to see that she's still sitting there with this look on her face. Now I'm starting to get pretty pissed off. It's not like dealing with this woman was the only thing I had either. It's midday of a busy lunch rush with loads of orders coming in, and this is really effing up any flow I'm getting going. So I put more soup on this time, and this time, I've got it on the hottest knob. I've also banged a soup bowl into the oven and cranked it up to 300 degrees. Once the soup's been at a racing boil for a couple of minutes, I pull out the bowl, and it's like lava. I pour the soup in, and it's so hot that it's still boiling in the heat of the bowl, and the waitress takes it to the table. At this point, the other guests have arrived, and they're all sitting there chatting away, and without even looking at the bowl, the woman picks up a spoon and she goes for it. As soon as the soup hits her tongue, she lets out the most almighty scream, and it's carnage. People are running all over the place with ice and cold water, and she's throwing a fit that I've tried to kill her with soup. When the dust starts to settle, I'm taken to the GM's office, and I'm getting hell. I then ask them to grab the waitress I've been working with and get her to tell them what happened. She backs me up the whole way, and I was basically told, hey... Don't be smart and don't try to kill any more members, please. Now, this was the one and only time in a 12-year career in some very good establishments that I've ever messed with someone's food. Guys, I don't understand how hot she wanted it. Like, for a person who was complaining that she was starving, why the heck did she want the soup boiling hot anyways? Like, at that point, you've got to wait even longer for it to cool down before you can even eat it. But hey, Karen logic, right? So today at work, we were talking about my rather bad handwriting, and it reminded me of the proudest moment in my life that could be considered malicious compliance. Now if it's not, I apologize, and I also apologize for the story being quite long. So this took place roughly 19 years ago, when I was in middle school. I had, and still have, a disability that prevents me from writing legibly. However, my parents quickly learned that I had an insane typing speed. As a result, my ADHD psychologist and my parents got me an Alpha Smart word processor for my 5th grade Christmas present. Now, it would be an understatement to say that this was a life changer. My assignments became so much easier. My attitude about school changed and I became the hip popular kid at school for having this fancy new piece of cutting edge technology. Now, none of my teachers between the 5th and 7th grade had an issue with this, and they were quite impressed by the technology. Mind you, word processors weren't exactly new but seeing them in schools were unheard of at this point, as they were quite expensive. Now this changed in the 8th grade, when Mrs. Grump came along. Mrs. Grump was your traditional old woman, who looked like my great-great-grandmother. She had grey hair, wrinkles upon wrinkles, and a bead necklace that reached past her breast. She would often wear flower print outfits and clip-on earrings. Seriously, she was one bobbed hairdo away from being Karen's grandmother. So the first day I took my word processor out, she was on my back. Anytime she saw me with it, she would threaten to take it away from me and reduce my marks for the class. I recall myself standing up for myself the first time, but I was never one to argue with my teachers. And I never needed to, because my teachers up until then were completely understanding. She said no, and I backed off. At this point, school became miserable for me. When I typed up my assignments, Mrs. Grump would lower my marks for it not being handwritten. Anytime I asked her if I could stay after class to finish my assignments or finish writing down my notes, she would lower my marks on the next assignment for wasting her precious time. Anytime I asked a friend for help in class, you guessed it, she would lower my marks. Luckily, as most of my fellow students did understand my problems, a group of them approached me and offered to help me. They start to offer me their notes each evening so I could bring them home and photocopy it so I could keep up with everything. We also hung out in the library at lunches, and they actually helped me with my handwriting so at the very least it could be legible, allowing me to write out my homework despite it taking super long. Now I genuinely don't know what her problem was, but she began reducing my marks because of my poor handwriting and inspecting my binders to make sure I wasn't stealing other people's work. If she found a photocopied note, she would lower my marks. This was absolutely ridiculous, as none of my classmates were marked in such way. She was literally picking on me and trying to fail me due to my disability. Now as I explained, I'm not one to question authority. 
Despite being miserable with Mrs. Grump's attitude, I quietly accepted that I would probably fail and that she would win. Unfortunately, I don't remember why my parents didn't help, but I think it might have been due to my older brother being part of Mrs. Grump's in the past, and they thought I was being overdramatic. ADHD, remember. So with that background out of the way, on to the compliance. Now, I don't know what happened this particular day, but I had a sudden surge of confidence. It was a particularly bad day. I remember we were doing an assignment involving microscopes in class. We needed to describe what we saw, and instinctively, I brought out my word processor. I put it on the table, looked down at the microscope, but when I came back up, Mrs. Grump was standing at my desk with my word processor in her hand. Mrs. Grump then says to me, Hey, I'm confiscating this and throwing it away. I'm so sick and tired of you constantly using this. I tell her, but I need it, and it's expensive. She then says to me, Too bad. I've warned you so many times not to bring it out in my class. You don't even seem to listen, so these are the consequences. At this point, she put it in her cabinet and shut the door. Everybody in class was silent as they were shocked she did this, and Mrs. Grump sat back down. Some of my classmates tried to calm me down as I was crying, and Mrs. Grump didn't even care. In particular, I recall of all people, one of the students who actually picks on me all the time trying to cheer me up. We'll call him Jim from now on, and Jim now works as a coach at a gym now. Of course, I didn't work on the assignment, and when Mrs. Grump comes back to take my blank sheet, she scoffs and says, If you don't like the way I teach, why don't you complain to someone about it? I then left the classroom defeated, but to my surprise, during lunch, Jim comes up to me with my word processor in hand. He had stolen it out of the teacher's cabinet while she was returning the microscopes in the lab. He told me he was going to keep it in his locker till after school, and then he'll return it. That way, I wouldn't get into more trouble if she finds it missing. It was at that moment when I snapped. Now, I don't know what it was. Maybe the fact that the person who bullied me for so long was helping me, but I wanted Mrs. Grump gone. But what was I going to do? Well, complain to someone, of course, just like she told me to do. She is the teacher, and it's not like me to disobey the teacher. Now, in any other situation, I honestly don't think this would have worked, but I got extremely lucky in regards to the events that followed this decision. So myself and Jim go to the principal's office during lunch. Now, me and the principal up until this point had never officially met, as she had just started at the school this year after the previous principal retired. We're gonna call the principal Mrs. Awesome. Mrs. Awesome was eating at her desk, and she was surprised to be interrupted, though she did sigh when she saw Jim. I know for a fact that those two were well acquainted. I think she thought the two of us had gotten into a fight, so she asked me to sit down and for Jim to wait outside. I then start explaining to her what happened in class, and after she realized Jim wasn't to blame, she called him back in to support my story. When I mentioned the word processor, however, her eyes light up. Despite never formally talking before, it was clear she knew who I was. The decision shifted to the word processor itself. She asked me to go over the functions and everything, and I showed her how I could type on it, transfer files to a computer, etc, etc. I then explained why I needed it, showed her my handwriting, and how I had relied on it since the 5th grade. She and Jim seemed quite interested in it, taking notes and everything. At the end of the impromptu tutorial that lasted, Mrs. Awesome thanked me, and she had us step out for a moment. After she brought me back in, she explained to me that there was nothing she could do at this point in time. She then gives me an out-of-school suspension for a week, but she explained that I wasn't in trouble at all, and it wasn't being marked against me. This also got Jim out of trouble as well, which he was thankful for. Mrs. Awesome said that everything will be taken care of next week when I return, and she'll contact my parents explaining the situation. So the week I was off, Jim was coming by and dropping off homework so I could photocopy it and not fall behind. Quite frankly, at first I thought he wanted me to do his work for him, as this was a complete 180 on how he used to treat me. But we did become good friends after this happened. Even asking him today, Jim doesn't recall why he started to treat me better after Mrs. Grump took my word processor. During those days, my parents were on the phone constantly. I wasn't aware of what was going on, but they bought me a new game, bought me takeout a lot, and genuinely, I felt pampered. My parents came in with me when I returned, but rather than to the classroom, I was brought to the school's boardroom instead, where a bunch of people in suits were. My family doctor and ADHD psychologist were also in attendance, which honestly shocked me. Mrs. Awesome then explained to me that these were the representatives from the school board, and they were extremely interested in my word processor. In hindsight, it was a bit of a dick move for no one to inform me that I was being brought in front of the school board to present my word processor, but I began explaining it like I did to Mrs. Awesome, showing the different functions and such. After I finished, my family doctor and psychologist gave a better explanation than what I did to why I needed it and how it helped. 
and it ended up with my parents explaining how it changed my education and how I enjoyed school due to it. Honestly, I don't recall the immediate response, but a day later, Mrs. Awesome did explain everything to me. Apparently, she was actually a sitting member of the school board, who had been standing in as the principal that year until they found a replacement. When I showed her the word processor, she saw the potential it had to help students such as her own daughter, who had similar circumstances as me. It was at that point she contacted the school board about potentially investing in some word processors for the school district next year, but they wanted to see it first. This is why she needed me that day, and why she allowed me to stay home for the week as there was no rule in place to protect the word processor from being confiscated and possibly destroyed. I still question why I was never informed until the actual meeting, but whatever. Anyways, due to the presentation, I was given permission to continue working on my word processor, much to Mrs. Grump's dismay. She was also required to adjust all my previous marks to remove her deductions. Meanwhile, the school board decided on ordering 5 to 8 word processors for each school in the district the next year. This school getting 8, as it was a larger school. Students in what was called a resource class, which was basically a class for students who needed extra attention, had the option to sign out the word processors for a day, to help work on their in-school assignments. There was an altogether increase of the students' marks as a result of this change, I've been told, and the school board began looking for other ways to help students. But what about Mrs. Grump? Other than having to readjust my marks and allowing me to use my word processor, at first, she got off scot-free. It's great and all that I made a difference in my school district, but how did Mrs. Grump get her desserts for making 8th grade a living hell for me? Now, I don't know if this was a mere coincidence, outside interference, or a parting gift from Mrs. Awesome after she returned to her position in the school board, but all resource students coming into the 8th grade had been assigned to Mrs. Grump's class the next year, and as a result, they were all using word processors constantly in her class. I learned this because my 9th grade class was right across the hall from her classroom, and the windows in the classroom allowed me to look across into her class and see the 4-6 to six students typing up a storm on their word processors. This came to a head, however, when Mrs. Grump had enough. She took one of the word processors and she throws it out the window. So after that, Mrs. Grump was asked to retire halfway through the school year, and she was replaced with the sweetest teacher that held ice cream parties for students when they completed their homework assignments each month. And that, everyone, is probably the proudest moment in my life. Not only did my actions result in students with disabilities getting more resources to help them, but I also got to watch the worst teacher I've ever had get escorted out of the school by security. Guys, what an awesome story, and shame on that teacher for going on such a power trip due to a device that assists with learning. And can I just say how much I love that OP situation with Mrs. Grump ended up helping so many other students out there? And for all who are curious, OP was using something called an Alpha Smart 3000, which looks like this. And Jim and OP are still friends to this day. So in this story, it's 1974, and my recently graduated mother is visiting France on vacation. She's at the bank exchanging money, and upon exiting the bank and counting the money, she realizes that they've given her $80 too much. In francs. When adjusted for modern day, that's equivalent to around $445. So my mom realized that an error had been made, and being the well-behaved person she was, she turns around, goes into the bank, got back in line for the teller, and tried to explain to the teller that a mistake had been made, to give the money back. So the teller's response was, Oh, no, we don't make mistakes. Now, a bit stunned, my mom walked out of the bank and stood around for a few minutes wondering what she should do. No, she decides. The teller had clearly misunderstood her, and it wasn't right for her to keep the money. She then turns around again and goes back into the bank. This time, instead of the tellers, she goes to one of the people behind the desks, like a manager or something. Once again, she tries to explain to the manager that a mistake was made. The manager's response was, Oh no, we don't make mistakes. Stunned yet again, my mom decided that she had done enough to try to make this right, and accepted her newfound fortune. However, she most definitely didn't run off cackling into the night, since she was now significantly more worried about getting mugged and or arrested, and she didn't want to draw attention to herself. And spoiler, her trip ended just fine, and nothing bad happened because of this. Now, it's easy to look at the situation and laugh at how stubborn the bank was, but my family has always wondered whether or not the employees at the bank actually did understand what my mom was trying to tell them. But to them, it wasn't worth the money to admit they had made a mistake. Guys, it's so funny that a lot of the comments in the post are about France never admitting that they're wrong. 
And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash malicious compliance. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's awesome lineup of stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash pro revenge, where OP gets revenge on a lazy Karen who thinks she can't be fired. And spoiler alert, she can be. If you missed it, check out how OP did it. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.